Good morning, Ignite. We are so happy to have you here this morning and those online and those who will continue to drinkle in. If you'll stand with us um, for a prayer before we begin our worship this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, we are just so thankful that today that we get to spend and worship you, Lord. We thank you for everyone in attendance today, whether in person or online, and that you guide them throughout their upcoming week and endeavors. Lord, guide and protect us in all we do. We love you, we praise you, and we thank you, God. And in your name we pray. Amen. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for all the things you do, Jesus. Thank you. Jesus, I can hardly count the times your grace has pulled me out. Sin and shame had left me bound. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for all the things you do, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you for your blessings. Thank you for a million little things. Thank you for the ways that you come through, Jesus. Looking back, all I can see is a history of miracles. I know if you're here with me, then nothing is Good morning, Ignite. We are so happy to have you here this morning. You can take a seat if you'd like. We do have a few announcements, and I'm going to be talking about um, something here for a second. Um, but our announcements this morning, um, tonight is the last Zanesville Memorial Concert Band performance. Um, that will be at um, Zane's Landing Park, um, unless weather would change, which it would be at Seacrest, um, and they would make an announcement about that. But come join um, some of the Zanesville Memorial um, performers, there's some here as well that uh, are in it at CT, and that'll be at 7 o'clock. Um, there will be a legacy committee meeting t today, June 28th, immediately following the 1030 service. And then if you're able, you can join us next Sunday for Youth Sunday. That'll happen during both services, so you can stop by and see the youth lead the service. I'm really excited to um, watch them. So my last announcement this morning is on August 18th, 
um, here at Central Trinity downstairs from 6 to 8. There's going to be something um, that we're hosting. It's called Glow Night. Ignite will be hosting that. It's our first time ever doing this, so we're really excited. Um, if you look downstairs through the windows um, towards the gymnasium, thank you for putting that up. We've been working really hard this week. You can see all of the mini golf courses that Michael has built, and we have been painting, so we're really excited for that. So there's going to be mini golf, food, um, table games, uh, all kinds of different stuff, bowling. Um, but this is not just for kids, this is for all ages, as we're gonna have a worship service during this time. Um, a short one, but we also want you to have um, fun with your family as well. So this can be for any age down to a little toddler, up to, I'm not gonna say ages, however old you are, all right? So we hope that you can come to that. <clears throat> if you go out to the welcome desk, there is a sign-up sheet. Um, we've got pretty much everything planned, except for food. All right, so if you want to volunteer and you don't know how to volunteer your time, and if you're a good cook or not, I'm not going to judge, you can sign up to bring something or uh, make something for this event. Um, so that sign-up sheet will be out the welcome desk. It's nothing really complicated, but we could use your help for that. And as well, if you want to invite somebody, there is a Facebook event for this, so you can share it on Facebook, or you can grab a flyer and take it to someone. There's some out there as well. We're really excited for it. I know that I'm going to dominate some kids in mini golf, so if you could be there, we would really appreciate your support and come have fun as well. So I think that's all the announcements we have for this morning. We're going to go ahead and move on to a new song, That's My King. I wish I could tell you, wish I could describe it, but I can't contain it, can't keep it to myself. There aren't enough colors to paint the whole picture, not enough words to ever say what I found. Wonderful and beautiful and glorious and holy, He is merciful and All together worthy. Who we talking about? That's my king. There's no one before you. Yes, we will adore you. All of this is for you. Who we talking about? That's my king. I'm not letting the rocks cry without joining the chorus. There aren't enough notes to make a harmony. It's the song of the angels through all of the ages with all of the earth and heaven symphony. Wonderful and beautiful and glorious and holy. He is merciful and powerful. Who are we talking about? That's my king. We declare the glory. Give him all the honor, all together worthy. Who are we talking about? That's my king. There's no one before you. Yes, we will adore you. All of this is for you. Who are we talking about? That's my king. That's my king. That's my God, that's my shepherd, my protector, that's my king, that's my rock, that's my anchor.
that's a great song. Uh, well, it's so good to be back with you guys, and uh, I thank Michael very much for preaching for me. Uh, he did a very good job while I was gone, and I uh, really appreciate him doing that. Uh, got a lot, of, a lot of gifts that young man does, so thanks a lot, Michael, and uh, it's good to be back here with you guys, and uh, go and get a little rest is, is good after <laughs> the last couple months for myself and uh, healing up a lot better and feeling better just trying to get some uh, strength and energy back after uh, not being able to do too much for a while. So uh, hopefully each of you are having a, a great summer. Um, we've got so much I in life to uh, keep figuring out and um, so I guess when we come together, it's it's an opportunity for us to share and encourage each other and be with each other. So uh, make sure you take time to do that each week, those that you see, those that you're with, uh, to give a little encouragement and give a little uh, hand here and there if you can. Uh, if you bow your heads still with me this morning, we'll say a prayer. Father God, you truly are our king. Uh, what an amazing way that we uh, can sing a song that gives such praise and glory to you uh, because we owe you so much for your sacrifice of, of your son on the cross for our sins to give us the ability to live and be with you eternally. If only we just believe and we give this morning all those things, Father, that are keeping us from you that are keeping us from having a closer relationship with you or keeping us from uh, a relationship that we have maybe with a family member or a friend or a neighbor or somebody that uh, we're estranged from that we uh, are having difficulties with. It's all about the relationships in life, Father. And I ask that you continue to push us to grow and to strengthen our faith, uh, to give us the endurance to finish the race and finish the fight. And we just share all these things with you, Father, because we know that you hear us and you hear our prayers. And we give them to you this morning. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. So many moments my heart is out in. So many moments have seen you still come through when it looked hopeless you said I'm not done and looking back I see what I've become I am living proof there's a God that's real I am living proof that your hands
Father, we are just so thankful for this day and our time together. We ask that you bless the sermon today, and we are just so thankful that the X-Men can be back bringing the sermon today and that they had a restful time while they were there. We thank you again for Michael these past few weeks and preaching his sermons. We love you, we praise you, and we thank you, God. And in your name we pray. Amen. Well, good morning. It's good to be back with you. And it's always good when you get to come back home. It's fun to go away, but it's always good to uh, be back and be, be where you know you, you need to be and where you're supposed to be. Um, there's, there's so much uh, going on in the world today that it... I think that the songs that they're singing this morning are so important with the words and uh, how they play into our understanding of what it means in Christ's love for us. Um, it just seems like Christianity is being attacked on so many different levels. If you even just paid any attention at all to the opening ceremony of the Olympics, they were mocking the... Um, Last Supper, uh, it, it's just disappointing and hard to figure out where God wants us to play a role in the world that we live in. And uh, the, the scripture message for this morning was uh, deep and wide, and it's, it's from Ephesians chapter 3, and it, it really is the idea that uh, how do we measure God's love? How does it look? And uh, it, it just seems hard in the way we go through life right now that sometimes it's measuring, seems like it's lacking a little bit, like God's love is there for us, but where, where is the world seeing it? And that's where we come in. Uh, in no way, shape, or form are any of us here saying as a Christian that we're a perfect person. Uh, I make so many errors and mistakes and so I think what happens is is that there's so many in the world that are hurting and they look at the Christian in general and they think why would I want to be like them uh, it seems like they're feeling that there's judgment based upon them that there's uh, people looking at them and saying, you know, what good are you? And it's a general feeling of apathy in the world that we have. And so as Christians, it's, it's our job to understand what Christ loves mean, means for us so that we can then share it with those who don't get it. Uh, and maybe you don't get it. Maybe I don't get it. Maybe not always do we understand it. Um, you know, going through the process that Lisa and I have gone through in the last few months, uh, it's, a, it's a trying time to figure out your faith um, and being able to endure what life throws at you. Uh, so many of you have gone through so many different things. There's uh, people in here that have had health issues and problems, and uh, I know how that feels. You feel like you're alone in the world. Um, quite a few years ago, 
was probably pushing close to 20 something now. Uh, Michael W. Smith, who is a uh, Christian singer and performer. We were at uh, Ichthus in uh, Kentucky with a lot of the teenagers uh, that we had in the church that we were a part of at that time. And uh, Amy Grant, uh, the famous Christian performer, was there singing. That's how long ago this was because she was still out doing tours and concerts all the time. And uh, she had sang quite a few songs and had talked to the kids and was uh, just providing a presence on the stage. And she said, but this time I, I want to bring out a younger performer and uh, he's fast becoming very talented and he's got a lot going on in this world. And so I want to bring out a, a friend of mine and, uh, and she looked backstage and she said, Mikey, can you come on out here? And uh, Michael W. Smith came out and she called him Mikey. I guess he, she was older than he was, but uh, he, he came out on the stage and uh, at the time, I, I would imagine that he wasn't very, very old, but he, he sang what eventually became the song, uh, Place in This World. And uh, I don't know if you remember that Christian song, but it's a good one. You can look it up. And it, it talks about, uh, in fact, it sings the words in the world around us you know, how do we figure out our place in this world? And it was a poignant song and meant a lot then. And it, I think it still means a lot now because that's really what it's about is we go around this world and we try to figure out where our place is. And it can feel empty. We can feel alone. We can feel all the different span of emotions that we have. But understanding what God's love means for us, well, how do we measure that? How do we measure our place in this world compared to a God that loves us so much? And we'll find from the scripture this morning that it's, it's deep and wide. Uh, and Ephesians 3, 14 uh, through 21 describes this. And it'll be up on the screen. For this reason, I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of its glorious riches he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Those words are really a picture of what God's love looks like for us. In fact, if we want to figure out uh, what God's fullness means for us. It, in today's terminology, you could think of your smartphone or your iPad or your tablet or your computer or anything like that. Uh, and you can picture those things with no more storage on them, which is very hard to do in today's world because you can go, uh, I just recently went and got a new tablet uh, to use here for uh, sermons and things and uh, they were like, do you want one terabyte or two terabytes? And I was like, how much is a terabyte? And they were like, well, probably you'd never be able to fill up two terabytes. <laughs> and I was like, well, whatever. Uh, and so you can imagine all the information that it, you carry and it fills up all that storage. That's what fullness means, is being filled up. 
And so if we are trying to express the fullness of God in our lives, basically what that means is every inch of who we are is filled up with God's love. Every inch of our being. This is such a beautiful prayer uh, because it's, it's, it's stating just how important that fullness is for each of us. And Paul's prayer for the Ephesians is, uh, he gives them an, an idea of what that means right in the very beginning of it when he says, for this reason, I kneel. How often do we kneel before the Lord? This meant a lot more probably then than it does now because <clears throat> in the Jewish faith, a lot of times standing was what they did to give praise to God. In fact, it's what we still do in church. A lot of times when we pray, we say, you know, you'll stand and pray with me. Uh, and so he's making a poignant idea here to say to them, for this reason, I kneel. Well, what's the reason? Well, he then goes on to give the reason that he's wanting them to know that for every one of them, for every family uh, in heaven and on earth gets its name and gets its place in this world from the Father. And so he says, you know, I pray that out of all of this, out of all of his glorious riches, that he strengthens you. And I think that that's a lot of the problem, is that we focus so much on our inadequacies and our difficulties and our struggles that we forget the fact that it's God that gives us the strength. We don't have to try to get it ourselves. Uh, you know, in the, uh, I'm reaching a stage in my rehabilitation where I'm trying to build up my own strength and different things. That's, that's the kind of stuff that we have to work on is the physical part and the, the mental part. But the spiritual part never leaves. It's always there and present, and it's present in full. It's never depleted. It's not something that you have to, uh, you know, rehydrate or, or get. It's always there. But you do have to access it. That's where we lack is the faith part comes in when we say to God, okay, God, lead me to where I need to go. Strengthen me where I need to be strengthened. And he gives us that strength. And Paul writes, with power through the Holy Spirit in your innermost being. That's saying in your inner parts, in your inner thoughts, in the innermost ideas of who you are, that's where God's giving you strength. Maybe that's sometimes why we can't access it as well because sometimes we don't really even know who we are. How many times do you look at yourself in the mirror, or I noticed as you get older, we don't look at ourselves quite as much as we used to, <laughs> Uh, but how many times when you pass by your reflection do you look and you say, who is that person? Or especially if you get that snapshot or picture from the past. Yesterday, uh, a couple of my former teenagers uh, that are all grown up now, uh, one of them's a minister in Athens, Lauren, and uh, the other one, Beth, uh, lives in Indianapolis, and uh, they both have their own jobs and their own lives, but they had posted a picture from Beth's uh, graduation from uh, college, I think is what it was. It could possibly have been her high school, too. I don't know. It was a while ago. Uh, but it was like 14 years old, the picture, and in it, uh, my beard was not white. It was dark. <laughs> uh, I was probably about 25 pounds lighter uh, and standing in the middle of them and they were much younger. Although I personally don't think they look much different because they're in their 30s and I'm in my 50s. <laughs> uh, and so I was like, well, 
appreciate that picture, guys. Thank you very much. <laughs> I can see how old I am. Uh, and we get reminded of that from time to time because in our mind's eye, we maybe haven't changed. Uh, that is one thing that I've noticed that looking out, I still feel like younger me. But then I see a picture of who I am and think, who's that guy? Who's that? I think that's kind of how God is with us. He looks and he sees the potential and, of who we can be. And so when we ask the question, how deep and how wide, how high, how long is God's love? It's full. And so when Paul begins praying for our inner being, the first thing that he says there in verse 17 is, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. I pray that you being rooted and established in love. Uh-oh. That's the hard part, isn't it? We are supposed to be faithful and loving. Now, I don't know about you, but sometimes you just don't feel so much love. You don't feel like giving it, and you don't feel like you're getting any of it back. It doesn't matter what's happening in the life that you're living. And so I think it's really important that that's one of the things that Paul focused on is he's saying that Christ's love dwells in your hearts, but it's through your faith and through that root and value that you feel in love. That's how it's established. That's how it's made. And if we don't feel love, how are we supposed to give love? If we don't love ourselves, if we don't love what we're becoming or who we are, how do you expect us, God, to love the people that we meet, our families, our coworkers, our neighbors, our kids? I don't I don't know if I've ever had a chance to say because uh, my daughter didn't really want to share here, but here in the last few weeks we found out, Lisa and I did, that we're going to be first-time grandparents, uh, which is a really wonderful thing. And I wasn't real sure when I was younger if I would enjoy being, uh, being pops or grandpa or whatever we want to call it, you know. Uh, but it's, it's un. It's, it's, I liken it a fact to, it's really interesting that Alex, my oldest, is who's having the grandchild because I can remember what it meant the first time that I realized I'm a father. That's a lot how I feel as a grandfather, uh, is a preparation. It's good that babies take nine months to arrive because it gives you a chance to, in your mind, and uh, wrap yourself around what it is that's about to happen. And... So, God gives us all these thoughts so that we can wrap our minds around what it means to have faith in our hearts and love in our being. If people looked at you and saw faith and love, well, if you remember from 1 Corinthians 13, when Paul wrote to the Corinthians, he said, these three remain faith, hope, and love. If you are a faithful person and you're established and rooted deeply in love, then I think people are going to have hope. And maybe the world that we live in won't be so angry all the time, won't be so in your face. Every person feeling like it's so, world, it's so weird that the world that we live in is people will, will tell people how to be and act, but yet they can't show them what it looks like to be and act like a loving person. And so Paul's prayer fits in so well with the world that we live in today because he's saying to us, how do you grasp how wide, how long, and how high, and how deep Christ's love is? 
How do you know that this love that surpasses everything is in you? Because the Bible tells you that you are filled to the measure. You are filled to the brim with the fullness of God. If we could share and show that to every person that we meet, if we could share and show that to our families, to our friends, what difference would life be if there was more love? If there was more kindness? If there was more caring? And so Paul is writing almost like to the future church. Understand that God's power is available in you, but it's never left. You're full of that power. You know, there's the saying that says, well, you're full of it. Well, you're full of his love. You're full of all these things, but the glory and the power and all that must be given to him. And so that means each and every day we give that to him. So what does that look like for each of us? What does it feel like? What does it feel like to know the song that we sing maybe as children or in Sunday school, deep and wide? Deep and wide, deep and wide, there's a fountain flowing deep and wide. Do you remember that one? Well, it's a fountain that's flowing inside of you. It's throughout your whole body and your whole being. And Paul here, all this a long time ago, was writing to the people at Ephesus saying, here is who you are. Know who you are. Know your place in this world because it's never changed. My love is given to you so that you might show how deep and how wide that love is in you so that you can show others how deep and how wide my love is for them. Figuring that out is what life's all about. We grow older not just because that's just the way that it is. We grow older because we need time to have that season and to be figured out who we are. Uh, a few years ago, we purchased one of those Blackstone grills and uh, they're really, really nice grills to have outside to be able to you know, cook things up on. Uh, and in the summers we use it obviously more often than the rest of the time. And we had used it and then we went on vacation. So when we came back, we had popped the cover off of it and we were gonna use it the other day. And I opened the lid and there's a bunch of orange rust on it. Well, I was a little freaked out because they're kind of expensive. And I was like, well, what happened here? So I read up on it. And I realized that the moisture in the air is what causes that. And what do you have to do to get it off? Well, you have to scrub and <laughs> clean it again. That's how it is. If you don't use what you got, you're going to get all rusted up, and that's just a part of time. So the bumps and bruises and scrapes and things that we feel as we get older, that's just a part of what happens as time starts to pass if you don't use what it is that you have. It doesn't mean that your physical infirmities of getting older will go away, but what it means is that you'll feel the fullness of God in your heart because that part never gets old. It never goes away. And the place that you are is the place that you're supposed to be. If you look at where you are now, there's a reason for that. There's a reason that God has you where you are so that you could learn something about yourself so that you can see or meet somebody that you need to meet in order to share your faith with them. 
that's how the immeasurable is measured. That's how the faithful respond is letting the power of God work within us. And Paul closes all that out by saying, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. It's a wonderful prayer. It's a prayer probably that we should pray each day, Lord, fill me and use me, mold me and make me and help me find out why you have me in the place that you have me. Help me carve out a place in this world, but also help me where I'm at share that love with whoever I meet. You bow your heads with me. Heavenly Father, as we make it through the life that we're in, may the love that you have for us be ever present throughout our lives. May our faith grow. May as we feel the fullness of how deep and how wide your love is for us. In Jesus' name.
Dear Heavenly Father, we are just so thankful for this day that we get to worship you each and every Sunday together as a family. You truly are the breath in our lungs each and every day. We ask that you guide everyone here as they leave today and bless their week and bless everything that they do in your name, Lord. Amen. Before you go, I am going to send a reminder to go pick up a flyer and a sign up if you're able, but we really hope to see you there on August 18th. If you'll stand with us for our last song, Praise Opens Prison Doors. God, if praise opens prison doors, we'll sing from sunset to sunrise. And if worship makes these walls come down, we'll sing from morning till midnight. Yes, we'll sing from morning till midnight. Sing all day, sing all night, our hearts lifted up, arms open wide. God, we know what you can do when we lift up our voices and worship you. Praise opens prison doors. God, praise makes the move we'll sing from sunset to sunrise and if worship mends our hearts to you we'll sing from morning to midnight we'll sing from morning to midnight sing all day sing all night our hearts lifted up our And walls start shaking. We shout and darkness runs away. Who then can stand against the power of Jesus' name? We sing and walls start falling. We shout because there is an empty grave. We sing because we believe. Thanks for coming today, Ignite, and we will see you next Sunday.